Hello and welcome to section 1.2, Properties of Real Numbers. Now today is going to be less about actual numbers and more about properties and groups of what numbers fit where. So let's go ahead and start this off. Real numbers are either classified as rational or irrational. Right? That's big key. Now rational can be expressed as A over B where A and B are integers and B is not zero. So what does this mean? It means basically that the decimal terminates, or it ends, or it repeats. So a rational number, all right, a rational number ends, well let's think about this, does 0.333 repeating end? No it does not, but we know that we can write 0.333 repeating as one third. Just because a decimal repeats doesn't mean it's irrational because we might be able to write some decimal numbers that repeat as fractions. All right? Now moving on to irrational numbers. Are decimal numbers that never ends or repeats. So such as pi. Pi is 3.14159267840, right? It doesn't stop, it keeps going. The square root of 2 would be a, another example of a rational number. Um, if you can represent, though, the decimal as a fraction, it is not an irrational number. Let, let's break it down a little bit further. So, after rational and irrational, in the group of rational numbers, we have integers. Integers are counting numbers such as 0, 1, 2, and 3, and the opposite of counting numbers, which is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Then whole numbers get even smaller. They break down into 0, 1, 2, 3, and then you have natural numbers, which is the same as whole numbers. They just don't include 0. And then real numbers, if it is a number, whether it's rational or irrational, it is a real number. Let's take a look now. Now, now, name the set of numbers to which each number belongs. So we're starting with 1. Uh, 1 is negative 23. So negative 23, right, if you look back at your note sheet, we know that negative 23 is a integer, right? It is not, and if you want to write Z, you can. It is not a whole number because it is negative. And since it's an integer, it's also a rational number, which we can represent by Q. And then it also is a real number. How do we represent a real number? It's an R with a bar through it. So it's one R and then draw a bar right through it. Number two. Now, the square root of 50 turns into 7.071, and it does not repeat. If it does not repeat, it is a what? You're right, an irrational number. An irrational number. And it also is, well, since it's a number, it is also a real number. Now, one-third as a decimal, it writes this. But since it can be written as a fraction, since it can be written as a fraction, we know that it is a rational number. Rational number, how do we represent a rational number? Q. If it's a rational number, it's also a Real number, R, with a bar through it. Now, let's go on to some properties. Properties, um, commutative of addition. It's just saying A plus B can be written as B plus A. Same exact thing for multiplication, except the addition sign turns into a multiplication sign. Associative property just tells you what you do first, but it's the same thing. So as long as you're adding, you can add A plus B first, but it's the same thing as adding B plus C first. So if this was a 1, 2, and a 3, it would still be 3 plus 3 is 6. And this would still be a 2. This would be a 3. This would be a 1. So 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 1 is still 6. So it equals the same thing. Same exact thing for multiplication. It doesn't matter what you multiply first as long as you multiply everything together. Now here's where it gets a little bit different though. Identity, how do you always stay the same in addition? you have to add a 0. So a plus 0 is still a, and 0 plus a is still a. Well now in multiplication, what do you have to multiply by to stay the same? You multiply by 1 to stay the same. So multiplication in 
or the identity property of multiplication, you multiply by one. Identity of addition, you add zero. Inverse, now you want to go to zero for addition. So inverse, you add the opposite. So if this is three, you would add negative three. If this was uh, negative four, you would add four to get to zero. Inverse or multiplicative, multiplicative inverse, you would times it by the reciprocal. So here's a, so we multiply by one over a to get one. Now the closure property, all it is is if you add two numbers together, it's going to be a real number for addition. Same thing with multiplication. If you multiply two numbers together, it's going to be a real number. Distributive, we've seen the distributive property already in FOIL, but we would just multiply that A to the B and that to the C. doesn't matter if it's in front or if it's in back. Now let's go ahead and find the additive inverse of each number. So all the additive inverses, remember we want to get this to be equal zero. So what do we have to add to that number? Well, we would add negative 1.25 or negative 1 and 25 hundredths. Same thing for B. We want to get 2.5 to be zero. What would we have to add to 2.5? We would have to add a negative 2 and 1 half. Now the multiplicative inverse is just a touch different, just a touch different. Remember from the last slide that we want to multiply up to 1. So how we do this, I'm going to write it out now as 1.25 times something to get to what we want to get to 1. So now what do we have to do? We have to divide both sides by 1.5, divide by 1.5. So now x would be 0 0.8. So for a, our multiplicative inverse is 0 0.8. Same thing with b. Again, we want to go 2 and 1 half times x, times a variable, equals 1. What do we have to do? We have to divide by 2 and 1 half. We have to divide by 2 and 1 half. So then we come up with 0.4 for being our multiplicative inverse. Now we have a word problem with the table. So let's take a peek. Let's see what it says. The prices of the components of a computer package offered by Computer Depot are shown at the table, or in the table. If 6% sales tax is added to the purchase price, how much sales tax is charged for the computer package? We can do this one of two ways. You can find 6% of each of these numbers, write it over here, and then add them all up to see 6% sales tax. But... How I'm going to do it, I am going to add all of these numbers up. I add all of these numbers up, which totals up to be, and I'm going to put a plus sign right there, totals up to be 907.44. And then we can take this times 0.06, which gives me a grand total of 54.45. So you're probably more used to seeing it this way. If you don't trust me, you can definitely go ahead and find 6% of this number, 6% of this number down the line, and then add up 6% of each of those numbers. And I bet it turns out to be $54.45. Last two here. Now we're asked to simplify. Now, we know what the distributive property is, but now we have two of them, so we have to take the distributive property to both of these guys. Remember that we're multiplying here on this first one, so it's going to be 6q plus 3r, and then we multiply back here too to be plus 20q minus 35r. Now, when we have variables... When we have variables, I like to treat them as apples, right? If you have a good understanding of your variables, you do not have to worry about them. But right now we have a Q and another Q over here. They are the same exact fruit. They are the same exact apple. So if you have six apples and a friend gives you 20 more apples, how many total apples do you have? I have 26 total apples. And what kind of apples do you have? You have Q kind of apples. Now we have to look for our next variables. What else? What else do we have? We have R's, or we have oranges. So I have three oranges, and somebody steals 35 oranges from me. So I am down 
How many oranges? I am down 32 oranges. And what kind of oranges? I'm down our oranges. And so there it is simplified. Taking a look at number 5. Here we go. Again, multiply. Make sure we're multiplying to both numbers in the parentheses. Minus 6y. And now that's supposed to be a y. And now we have to be careful here because this is a negative 2. Treat it just like a negative 2. Make your life a little bit easier. So now it's going to be a negative 6x, a negative 2y. Now can we simplify? What fruits do we have? We have x's, and so we have 12 pairs here, and we're taking away 6 pairs. So we have a 6x left. And then what do we have? Be careful here, though, ladies and gentlemen, because it's a negative 6 and a negative 2. So you combine those to become negative 8y. And so that does it for section 1.2, properties of real numbers. Good day.